Hi everyone, it's Pastor Wagner, and this is my weekly video blog. Today I want to talk about why atheists don't believe the gospel. Have you ever wondered why a lot of people out there don't believe the gospel? There are a few that do, but most don't. Well, there's a good reason for that, because most people don't believe the gospel because they don't have the ability to believe. They can't believe it. And that's because they don't have a regenerate spirit within them. They're dead, they're spiritually dead in their trespasses and sins, and they don't have the ability to hear, to understand, or to believe spiritual things. It says in 1 Corinthians 1, 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it's the power of God. So when the gospel is preached to a person that perishes, to the person that's dead in, spirit, in, dead in sins, to that person the gospel is foolishness. It doesn't make any sense to them. But to the person who is saved, who has been given a regenerate spirit, to him it's the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You see, the natural man doesn't know the things of the, spiritual, of the Spirit of God, neither can he. They're spiritually discerned. He has to have spiritual discernment, and he doesn't have it in his natural state of death and sins. Jesus said to some wicked Pharisees in John chapter 8, in verse 43, why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? He didn't say will not, he said cannot. They didn't have the ability to hear his word. Verse 47, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You have to be of God, born of God, to hear God's words. They weren't born of God, and therefore they couldn't hear them. In Romans chapter 8, 7 and 8, because the carnal mind, that's the person without the spirit, the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see that? The, the carnal mind cannot be subject to the law of God. Not that it will not, but it cannot, has not the ability. Verse 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You see the inability. Why then do most people then believe in God? We just saw verses that says they can't believe the gospel, they're not subject unto the law of God. The, the gospel's foolishness to them, and so on. But why do most people then believe in God? Well, it's because it doesn't take a regenerate spirit within to believe in God because the creation itself declares that there's a God. Anybody with any bit of intellect whatsoever that just looks at the world around him should know that there's a God. Romans 1 and verse 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Anybody that looks at this creation and says that there is no God is without excuse because the things that are made demand that there is a creator and a designer. Psalm, 1, Psalm 19 and verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Just look up at the stars. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. The sun and the moon are at just the right distance from the earth so that life, this planet is hospitable to life. And if they were even slightly off, it wouldn't work out. There would be no life on this planet. Job said in, Job's, in Job 12, 7 through 10, he said, But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. You got a question about this? You want to know whether there's a, there's a God or not? Go talk to the beasts. They'll tell you. They have more sense than you do if you don't believe that there's a God. Verse 8, Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Oh, a bunch of atheistic evolutionists don't know it, but everybody else should know it. It's plain as the nose on your face. Verse 10, In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Now, any moderately intelligent person immediately recognizes design when he sees it. And I mean anybody. I'm talking even children here. Design is the purposeful arrangement of parts. And design is self-evident. Even a child can look at it as something as simple as a book or as complex as a computer, and he can immediately know that it was designed and didn't spontaneously come into existence just because of the, of the self-evident fact that it has a purposeful arrangement of parts. We all recognize it. You don't have to be trained in how to do it. Anybody can do it. Look around your house, look at any item you see, and you can automatically tell that it was designed because it has a purposeful arrangement of parts. The child wouldn't even need to have ever seen the item before, nor to have known who designed it or how. 
because the marks of design are self-evident. But an atheist that would immediately recognize design in the world around him looks at one of the most highly complex machines in the universe, that is a cell, which is run on highly complex computer code, DNA, and he concludes that it was not designed. How does that work? This is why God calls atheists fools. In Psalm 14 and verse 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There is no other word to describe a person that can look at this complex creation around us, that can look at the complexity of life and declare that there is no designer, that there is no creator. There's no other word to, de to describe such a person than a fool. 1 Corinthians 1, 19-21 for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? All these people that think they know so much science and they look at the most complex machine in the universe and say, oh, that just spontaneously arose somehow. God hath made foolish the wisdom of this world. He looks at you and laughs. Verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, I don't hate atheists. I have a very good friend of mine who's an atheist, was overseas with me, been a friend of mine for years. Love the guy. I have friends here that are atheists that I've met at these at, at atheist meetup groups that I go to. And we have a good time. And generally our discussions or discussions or debates are, are cordial and, and they're friendly, unlike the clowns that will probably leave a bunch of nasty comments on this video. We have a good time. But I will tell you that if you are an atheist and you deny that there is a God, you are a fool. I'm sorry to say it, but you are. Now, if you ever want to get serious about life and get serious about actually thinking and, and start maybe observing the things around you and the world around you and come to grips with the truth and with self-evident truth of design, then I'd love to talk to you. Until then, I'll talk to you again next week. Lord willing.